Hello everyone and welcome back. Hopefully you had a great lunch and wasn't it fantastic to see all those musicians? Absolutely brilliant and uh, congratulations to Claire for putting that together. Um, just brilliant and uh, I know we didn't have time to play at all but that will be coming back later on because we've got about 20 minutes between each of the panel sessions uh, to make sure that you get an opportunity to see it all and it gives us a chance to uh, get ready for the next panel session. Now for this, we would very much like to hear from you. Our panel are there, ready and waiting to hear from you, and they want to hear your questions. So again, as before, go to Slido, which is on the left-hand side over here, and uh, on the right-hand side even. Uh, I've got it right eventually. And underneath is the donate button. You can still donate throughout the day, but we want to hear your questions on Slido. And you can keep the chat going on over here. We'd love to hear all of that as well. Some great conversations going on. And thank you for all of that popular feedback. We actually may, may do a poll a little bit later on, get some of the words from you that have really summed up the way you feel about the way it's gone today. Hopefully you've thoroughly enjoyed it. So on to uh, the first of four panels we've got this afternoon. Later on we're going to be talking about health, we're going to be talking about sport and we're going to be talking about social influences. But first it's a great pleasure to welcome three of our ambassadors, our REACH ambassadors, uh, to talk to us. We've got Frank Letch, we've got uh, Claire Cashmore and of course back Alex Brooker. So welcome back, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, um, I just want to come to each of you firstly, just to say hi and hello. Uh, Frank, um, Mayor of Crediton, long-standing member of REACH, long-standing ambassador. Um, it's, it's, it's been quite a journey for you. Well, I'm old and I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, I've been in with REACH since 1992, I think. Um, wow. More, it's, it's, maybe even uh, most of these people were born. Um, so, uh, that, so my my journey has been a long one. I was actually for 18 years uh, until I saw the light of day and let other younger, more able people take over. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here, Frank, and to, to have your wisdom as part of the panel. That's not saying nobody else has brought wisdom. Shovel for one, please. <laughs> um, me meanwhile, uh, Claire, congratulations on your... Um, I understand you've got a new book deal. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's actually been kept complete secret till now. So this is the first, first announcement of it. Yeah, it's coming out in June. Um, and basically, my aim is to try and normalise disability as much as possible. I realised that there's no books out there with children with a disability. Well, there are very few, so I, I wanted to kind of get that out there. So hopefully, people will buy it. It's always the worry, isn't it? But yeah, so coming out in June, so please support it if you can. Well, good, good, good luck with that. Um, really, really wish you all the very best. And uh, yeah, it's such an important topic to be covering. And Alex Brooker, uh, welcome back. Lovely to see you back in your sauna. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. I was talking before about how lovely it was, and one of the greatest achievements was to have my two daughters. And I've not seen them since uh, Tuesday, and I just went down to them then. And uh, that's the first time they sent me for five days, and they couldn't have cared less. They just wanted the <laughs> iPad. So, yeah, I'll take them off the list now. Quite right, too. And I tell you what I'd like to do is actually, because all of you being ambassadors for REACH, um, just before I go to the questions we've got coming in on Slido, just very quickly for all three of you, when did you first become an ambassador? When did you first hear about REACH? And also, what made you want to perform this role? So starting off, off with Frank. I honestly believe I've been an ambassador ever since I've been a member of REACH. <laughs> <laughs> um, being flippant either. Um, I've been working, I've been doing DLA applications and tribunal things. Um, there is no job spec, uh, but I was officially crowned, in my word, ambassador about eight or nine years ago, I think when I left as being a, a trustee. Uh, and it's a role that I'm on board. Um, even more strongly perhaps th than ever in these times when there are a lot of other things going on. And one of the th things that we have to, when I was a child, anybody born with uh, an upper limb or any other um, physical disability, they were immediately sh shipped away in into a special school. And that school wasn't, was special. It actually was a dump. Uh, and now, of course, we have people who are in mainstream education and that is, has, for the last 25 years, 30 years, has been the great challenge. 
Yeah, brilliant. And actually, I'm going to follow up with a question on that because that's really interesting uh, that you mentioned that. Uh, Claire? Yeah, so actually, ironically, I remember Frank from when I was a little girl. Um, and I always remember watching him do all these really cool things and putting his jacket on the, the tape uh, over the chair with his feet and writing over his feet. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, obviously, being a five year old girl, thinking this was really cool. So he was definitely a huge ambassador for me. Um, when you ask how long I've been ambassador for Reach, I actually don't know. I can't remember when it was I first started doing it, maybe after 2012. Um, but no, it's, it's really important for me, I think to be able to share my journey and share the highs and the lows and hopefully impart some of my knowledge that I've had and kind of show that, you know, I turned out pretty well and actually we can do anything we want to do. We've just got to try and find slightly different ways around it. Um, so I, I, I just hope that, you know, I can provide some of that knowledge for parents and children alike and be an open, honest person for people to come and talk to. So that for me is, is the really important part of being a REACH ambassador. It's okay. privilege to being asked. Alex. Um, I, I, do you know what? I'm, I'm the same as Claire. I'm not entirely sure what what year it was that I got involved with Reach. Uh, it was um, it was Sean Brooks who got who got me involved, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm very grateful to her for doing that because it's been, uh, you know, it's been a, a wonderful charity to to be a part of and to be honest with you for me uh you know as part of the ambassador role the, the big thing for me is kind of like i said earlier is you know there wasn't anybody i didn't know any other disabled people really when i was a kid and i didn't know any but certainly no one with kind of disabilities similar to mine so for me a big part of that is being able to be in a role to, to help um younger people with any kind of questions or or advice that that they may want I've got a really, really good question, actually, um, for, for, for you, actually. I'll come to you first, Alex, if I may. Because it, it's, how old were you when you had the realisation, I am enough? And uh, more importantly, how do we then instil this in our young REACH members at an earlier age? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's a, it's a big question. The, the idea of, of being enough is is quantified in in so many different ways. It's like you know, if you like, uh, you know, sometimes I still don't feel like I'm enough in, in my own job and, and 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 things like that. And that's norm. That's a regular thing. Everyone feels like that. Um, I think that in terms of kind of my my disability, I think things like things changed for me after 2012. Um, and it wasn't just to do with being on on the television, although that was a big part of it. I think it was it was a big part of being around the Paralympics and just what it was like at that time in London. And it was all it felt to me, or it kind of felt I don't know, you, you felt a lot very proud anyway uh, to kind of be a disabled person and um i think that was a, that was a big big moment for me uh, in terms of kind of how I, how i felt about myself and obviously that was accentuated by being able to talk about my disability on the last leg in the way that i do in terms of like younger people again it's one of those things where my, as I said to you before, my, no one ever said to me, you're not going to be able to get married, you know, you're not going to be able to get a job. No one told me those things. These are insecurities that were kind of born out of, uh, you know, from, from myself. And I think it's hard for parents, from, for like my mum and dad, they just always assumed that I was getting on with things and you kind of in, internalise stuff. And I, I feel like for, for parents, you know, it, it, I suppose it's important just to keep reassuring, you know, their, their kids that, you know, they're, they, they are they are more more than enough more so uh, you know and I think that that's that's all you can do and eventually the penny will drop you have to figure it out for yourself as well there is an element of that you know no matter what my mum and dad said to me you know again the thing with my daughter uh, holding my hand that had to happen for me for me to kind of get over it so it's a it's a double-edged sword yeah, really interesting. I've got quite a lot of questions to uh, get to, but um, please do ask your questions. Uh, send them in to us on Slido. You can see them there on the right-hand side of your screen. Please do let us know. Our panel are here. They're ready and waiting for you. And no question is a silly question. Please do ask it. And, and Claire, in writing your book, one of the things I think is 
most people find is a, is a <coughs> real challenge to get the balance right between being wishing to be recognised for being you and then wishing to be recognised for the fact of maybe what you've achieved overcoming difference. How, how do you go about striking that balance? Well, actually, the, the book, so it is kind of based on my journey a little bit, but it's not fully. It, it's, it's for children, so it's um, simply a picture book. And what I wanted to do was get a character that had a disability, but we don't talk about the disability. So it's a, it's a little girl with one arm um, who swims, and, but we don't ever mention the fact that, you know, she's got one arm, it's just there. And coming back to what Alex was just saying, you know, I, I was super self-conscious during my teenage years. And it's because I never saw anybody like me and there, there was no role models in the media. So that is my main aim. I want to get more people out there that have a disability to just, like I say, normalise it, get rid of that taboo. Um, and I think hopefully, coming back to the previous question, that will be how we make people feel like they're enough from an earlier age. And our disability doesn't define <coughs> us. That is just a part of us. And actually it makes us kind of cool and unique. And you know, how many people can tell stories like your arm got bitten off by a shark or a crocodile or... So it, it, it's just a part of us. And I think as soon as you realize that you don't need to follow the crowd and be a sheep and you become okay in your own body is when, when you'll become more comfortable and confident in being enough, essentially. And Frank, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about those early days of, of reach. You know, you've seen not only the world and society change tremendously in terms of their attitudes towards people of difference. What about reach? How have you seen that evolve over the years? It's changed really dramatically. My first contact with Reach was um, by s uh, sending a letter to Bruce, I can't remember his second name, who was the, who was the secretary of Reach before, and he said, oh, you have, um, you have a branch near you. I was in North Wales, uh, and it's in Manchester. So I went off the meeting, and there I met the first of the, uh, I, I call them the Dizzy Blondes. Those are Bernie McDonnell and Sean Brooks and I can still remember uh, Michael was about six and he we, they were having a musical time and Michael came into the room and said mum's dropped off what shall I do and Bernie said well if you can't put it back on yourself stick it in my shopping bag um, and also the first annual I went to was in Taunton and it was a day long that was all the second one was in Glasgow and it was a day long and that's where I stood up fully because they were a, a trustee short and somebody said would anybody like to think that they could be a trustee and I was with a girlfriend at the time who was a, I said you should be doing that so I stood up and was elected and very shortly after I had a, a, an email or a letter from the then chairman who said what is your agenda wanting to be a trustee of reach and I thought what you ask a man with no arms what his agenda is for being a trustee of reach <laughs> And that was the, because when I started, it was a talking shop for parents. And I think Chris Creamer, who was a long standing uh, here with me, trustee, would have said one big thing I did was to put children at the front of reach. There you are. So that's how it's changed, I think. And I was actually Jeremy Beadle, who started RAW, the Reach Activity Week. Jeremy and I, we did a lot of fundraising and we put the first one on in 2000 it's gone on ever since and it's got bigger and bigger and i've been to quite a few of them um, but i'm getting too old to do any of this rock climbing and all this orienteering rubbish so uh, but it, it's uh, and I, that's how i think reach has has really improved and we've got a, a good network of um of local di um, branches which uh, when i first started we did not have so it's, it's evolved and i think it's a, a very good involvement my, my one sadness and then i'll be absolutely to be up front with because I always fought strongly against taking the word children out of the strap line because I thought mm. a is a very most much easier to go trying to collect for children with upper limb deficiency than people with upper limb deficiency um, so I was a bit as soon as I left the sausages would change it and they did <laughs> No, thank you for that, Frank. Really interesting. And uh, actually, Claire, coming back to, to, to your book, 
um, for a second. You you were saying that that you you didn't haven't mentioned at any point any point in the book that the lead character um, has a, a missing arm. Clearly, a, a, a decision that you wanted to have. What, what was the discussion when you were talking to the publishers about that? I'm sure there was a bit of a conversation that would have taken place about how do you address that. Yeah, so I originally went to the publishers with this idea of um, having a children's book with disability it, it appearing in it. Um, and they were like, yeah, absolutely, we'd love to do this. It's a brilliant idea. And then we kind of said, well, how, how do we want to portray the disability? Do we want people to think about it? Do we want kids to be you know, straight away aware of it? Or do we just want it to be underneath the radar? So hopefully the kid picks up on it, but doesn't, doesn't really bat an eyelid because it just happens that the main character has a disability, which often, you know, you see a lot of children's books and that there is kids with disability, either it's mentioned or they're just in the sidelines. Whereas I wanted the main character to be in there and then other kids that you know are able-bodied and that there's nothing it's just seen as normal so hopefully that kind of answers your question I feel yeah like. no absolutely yeah, the, publisher was, the publisher has been absolutely amazing and um, it's with egmont so that they're, they're, they're quite a good publishing company and they were really accepting of my views and how i wanted it to be um so yeah it's hopefully we'll see more and more of this and we can more kids will be able to see um, somebody that's like them in, in a storybook. The a question that's we, we've had probably this question about four or five times already today and it's clearly on the forefront of people's minds and Alex I'd like you maybe to answer this one if you could because I know everyone has their own way of dealing with that difficult question we heard it before um, from our uh, contributors this morning but what was your stock line what how did you respond when people asked about your arm um, or, or, you know, or anything to do with your difference, I should say. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's not just the arm, I'm pretty much double parked. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'd, um, I just, you know what, I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to just say I was, I was born like it. And, that, and that's, the, that's the way, you know, I remember we told like a drama teacher that it was like a wild, like some sort of like wild dog. And it was kind of, I remember thinking at the time, the logic isn't right because, you know, what sort of wild dog would do one hand and then come back and match the other one up. Uh, but anyway, it was kind of, yeah, that was, that was only one time I kind of used to mess about. I used to just tell people that's, that's how, that's how I was born. And it's kind of what I, what I'm telling, you know, my, my eldest now, when she asked why I'm different is kind of, you know, that, that's how, that's how, you know, daddy, daddy was when he was a baby. And, and that's kind of, yeah, that, that's basically the, the answer that, that I give. And it's interesting, you know, using the different words, you know, I was born like this, I'm different. And that seems to be the, the words we like to use today. The word disability has many, you know, thoughts for, for different people. And we've had a question in here about, you know, the, maybe the fact that disability has a slight negative vibe about it. Would you have another idea about how to reframe it, to reword it? Um, Claire, you were nodding your head there, so. Yeah. See, I think it's only got a negative connotation because that's what people have created. <coughs> Whereas actually, if we can see disability as a positive thing, like I'm proud to have a disability, I'm proud of who I am. And I think as somebody with a disability, if we promote that and show how it's just a word, then I, I feel like we can change that from a very negative thing to a, a really positive thing. Frank, you know, you've, you've heard many different words being used in the time. I mean, mm -hmm. so back, I remember when I was growing up as a child, the word handicap was still seen as an it acceptable was. word. And, that, you that know, was the word. vocabulary's changed a huge amount. Mm -hmm. what, what's your feelings on the current vocabulary that's used? I think people have tried to become kinder and kinder, but they haven't succeeded. Um, if I were to say anybody, say, um, I think Claire's right, we are differently able. Because um, I can write, I just don't write with my arms because I don't have any. Uh, and that's the way I would, I would, go, uh, would, would put it. Um, and I, I think really society is getting better and I honestly believe a lot of this is inclusion in schools because as I say when I went to school at the age of five up until the age of 16 I was shoved away in 
in the disability or hacker. Now the children are in the, uh, they're at the cold phase of education. They're supported a little bit more, um, but they are, so need them. Um, and it's, it's getting to the stage now where I'm pleased to say that children hardly bat an idea. I mean, I go around my town and I'm really well known. Um, a lot of the kids call me Frank and most of the others call me Mr. Mayor. Um, because I have one great advantage. You know, how many mayors do they know? I walk in, I've got no chain. Wow, that's the mayor. In fact, I tell you one story. A little boy came home to his mum, uh, his grandma, and said, Grandma, we went to Exeter today, and we went to the Guild. Said, what did you do there? Well, we met a mayor, she said. He said, but it wasn't the real one. Oh, right. <laughs> Why was that? But he got arms. <laughs> Great story. Love that, Frank. Absolutely brilliant. And, and actually, we've got another question for you, Frank. Just a, a quick follow-up question about um, somebody's very keen to hear all about your fitness regime. Yes. Um, could you I'm share it with us? <laughs> yes, um, I could. Um, I do weight lifting uh, by lifting up pints of beer. Um, but every morning, it's very sad, um, I lie in bed and do a hundred and this is to help me um, you know because when you work with your feet you have to have strong stomach muscles otherwise you get worn out very quickly that's really I think that's the the basis of my keep fit is a uh, hundred press-ups and drinking pints and occasional glasses of wine at the weekend <laughs> Good, good, good regime, Frank. I like that. We're getting a huge amount of comments coming in about, you know, not underestimating you, for all of you and for that matter, all of our Reach ambassadors and people who've been around Reach a long time in terms of the influence that you have as role models and how important that is. And for, for you, Alex, how how much do you see that as your role in life to be that positive role model for especially youngsters growing up with differences yeah i mean it's a it's it's a it's a massive privilege to be to be put in that position as i said before you know i'll i'll there's be nothing that i'll achieve in my career that i know will be more important than than being able to do that at the same time obviously there's it's there's a lot of pressure as well um i want to i want to do well and i want to represent disability in in the right way or you know as best a way i can and that's kind of some of the stuff i looked at in the documentaries you know am i am i doing that because you know i, I wanted to learn more about myself so i can so I can help others really. And it, and it is hard because, you know, one person's way of doing something isn't always another person's. And that doesn't, just because you're disabled, it doesn't mean we all have, you know, we don't all have to agree. And I, I think that that's an Im important distinction to make. I just, I want to help people kind of, you know, especially the young people, as I said, the, the best I can. I'm extremely passionate about it because as I said, I'd, I'd love to have had, you know, seen, seen people, you know, doing stuff like, like Claire's done, you know, as a swimmer. I'd love to have seen more of that when I was younger. You know, the Paralympics, back when I was younger, they weren't even really on. You know, it wasn't up until maybe Sydney was the first time I saw a little bit. And by that time, you know, you're looking, I was 16 by then, and even that wasn't low. So that kind of, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a massive thing uh, for kids. And actually talking about sport, you know, Claire, you've seen all of these changes. You know, I know you've talked before about 2012 being such a pivotal moment for Paralympics and for power sports generally. What sort of things are you pushing for at the moment in terms of any change, any development, any, anything in the future uh, for Paralympic and other power sports? I think just wanting to make sport as accessible as possible and, you know, any kid of any ability can get involved and not every child or adult is going to become a Paralympian. So almost knowing that you can just get involved and do it and have fun and make friends and just enjoy sport and it's not always about being at the top of the game because there's, there's so few of us that can get to that stage. Um, so yeah, I think it's just showing kids what opportunities are out there. Um, there's so many opportunities and often people think that they can't do it because of their disability, not fitting whatever they've seen on TV. Whereas actually there's always adaptions and things that can be made to make it accessible for them. So yeah, just trying to, trying to get that, that, that out there and let, give people the chance. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. And, uh, you know, the, the refreshing thing is we are seeing more and more of that. Um, one final question for you all in your own respective ways is to think about the future, to think about people who are looking at you wanting to become a mayor, wanting to become a Paralympian, wanting to become a journalist, comedian, TV presenter. What advice do you have for our Young Reach members to achieve what you've achieved? And uh, let's start with you, Frank. Make sure that you're in your community, that your community knows who you are, and uh, as an early age, become interested. I mean, I was never into it, I still not, uh, until a, quite a late age. Um, but I think anything you do with your community will help you and your community. And uh, maybe up being the old grey mayor that, I, that like I am, I've been the mayor for 13 years. I've not checked it up, but I think it's probably the longest reign of a mayor in in, um, because normally they last a couple of years, then they're burnt out. Um, but I'm made of asbestos. And after all, Frank, you are a real mayor. <laughs> I'm a what? Sorry, I didn't get that. You're a real mayor. Oh, Unlike yes. the mayor of Exeter. <laughs> Absolutely. All the rest of... All the rest of... Uh, so, so, Claire, you know, we've been thoroughly inspired by um, Paralympians such as yourself and it's great to see the level of acceptance and, and the fact that the, the, the level of, it's just normal to see this on our TV screens now. What about somebody who is, you know, very young, looking to become a, just maybe just in terms of sport, just to succeed in whatever sport they have, given their difference, what advice would you have? I'd say don't be afraid to fail. Um, failure is an opportunity to learn so much about yourself and find a slightly different route or a way around. Um, love what you do because it will never seem like a chore and be willing to work hard. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Alex, you've had, a, you've had time to prepare for this, but I'm, I have a sneaky feeling you've heard the question before. Um, yeah, I would say, I think, you know, for for young people, you know, wanting to get into television, there's more opportunities now. And, you know, the big thing is not to feel like I did when I was younger, which is maybe, the, you know, maybe society didn't want us on television. Maybe there's a reason why, you know, maybe because we looked different, we weren't meant to be on telly. That was a load of rubbish, and I wish I'd never felt like that. And I think, it, you know, the big thing is, is to believe to believe in yourself believe that you have something that no other person has you know the big thing i found with television is my disability makes me unique in terms of you know how i appear on screen but also in my attitude it's completely you know it, it's completely different to josh's and to an extent even even hills's and you know i think that that is to believe that you can give something that no one else can and and i think that if you if you have that then you know and go into these these things, you know, kind of auditions or opportunities with that confidence in yourself, then, um, yeah, I, I think you'll have a great chance of succeeding. Brilliant advice from all of you. Thank you so much. You've been fantastic ambassadors. And on behalf of everybody at REACH, thank you for being uh, the ambassadors you are. And thank you for all the help and advice and just being there for people. We really, really do appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll meet in person next year. Um, but who knows? It might be on another screen again. In the meantime, Frank Letch, uh, Claire Cashmore and Alex Brooker, thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. Take Thanks, care, guys. Bye. Appreciate thank it. Bye-bye. And thank you for all of your questions. Don't forget, you can ask loads more questions. Again, just remember, on Slido, we want to hear from you for our next panel, which is coming up at 3 o'clock. This is our health panel. We know that mental health is particularly important at the moment with everything that's been going on, and not just to do with mental health generally, but also people within our community of reach. So make sure you're here to join our three panellists there. That's coming up at 3 o'clock, so see you then.